Hello. Hello. Long time, long time no see, long time no talk. Yes. How have you been? Yeah. Um yeah, it's been a bit crazy, right? <laughs> I don't know about for you, but there there's been a lot of um things going on in the background and lots of um new insights, I suppose, new understanding of what the hell. Absolutely. More and more revelations, right? Yeah. Um I noticed that you took a break from recording, so did I for about a month. <laughs> so yeah. um I know that some of our listeners have been waiting for some updates either from you or from me or from us both. So here we are. And I think that this is going to be an interesting one, right? I think that it's going to be a very interesting one. Yeah, we haven't caught up for ages. I mean, I've been like traveling around and you've moved and... <laughs> yes, <laughs> you could say so. I mean, I'm still traveling all over the place, but it seems like we all had like a very interesting time discovering different places and doing the work I kind of sometimes find my, myself just like coming out in the middle of the night and just like walking in different areas so we keep spreading the codes right yes yeah okay so a while back <laughs> a while back like last time we actually had a I think you did um you did a couple of releases and then on the back of that, I was like, oh, we should talk about the Black Dragon Legion and who they are and what they're up to and where do they come from? Absolutely. So you... um, I, I, I know that many people have been asking about that to kind of also give like more clarity, are they the Fatali or, or, or who are they really? And I was supposed to do a release on that and I will speak about where evil comes from soon. <laughs> But I think that giving a little bit of background on the Black Dragons is going to be a good idea. So would you like to start or shall I? You go. You go. I'll, I'll chip in. Okay. Uh, so from my perspective, from uh, my research, as I indicated a couple of times on my videos, um, the fall didn't start in Density 4. Like from, you know, those different races that everyone talks about that are fallen, such as reptilians, dracos, even the Anunnakis. I would say that the fall was triggered there, and it triggered all the drama that we are seeing right now. Mm -hmm. However, it started much higher, and it didn't even start in the planes of the external creation. Because in order for the fall to happen, it's usually being triggered from those higher levels. And whether the fall was necessary or not, I will kind of leave it to the judgment of everybody, since sometimes we may think that it was essential for the whole evolution to take place. But we could also we could have Sorry. also done it the other way around, right? Yeah, we could we could have chosen differently. Right? Absolutely. But the choice was made by the Elasians, speaking of choices. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest difference was because there's been many experiments performed before about like, okay, what happens with the fallen beings? And they would always reach like a certain level of disconnection from the source. But then it's like, they would be like, okay, like we want to come back because we know who we are. We still remember. But I would say that the Elysian experiment that later led to the fall was the first situation where those beings disconnected from the source 100%. They just disconnected completely, and that indicated the gone fall. Yeah. And since we were dealing with the internal creation planes, which is pretty much like beyond the um, dimensional scale, it was about the complete fall of the plasma bodies. So if so, once they later, because they later started invading the external systems and that kind of led to the creation of the Borja matrix um, they started already having fallen light bodies but that was coming from that reverse plasma template so the way that I perceive it is that they are the fallen Elasians so just like everything else in the universe they once used to be good but the point is that they started their existence without any kind of remembrance about it. Yeah. No single spark whatsoever. Yeah. 
So I've had the same in insight <laughs> in that <clears throat> um, there are some beings that have no connection to their eternal self, right? To to source self, um, because of when they were born. So when we when we're talking about um like different races coming into existence, it depends on the point in um the push out of the center point, right? Where you come into that. So where you were birthed from. And if you're birthed through um races that have disconnected from their source creation, you don't have one. Obviously. And that's later what the host field is for. Because if you don't like you can do it without the host if you have that connection. But if you don't, there's just like a certain thing that you need to connect to in a certain way. And that's what I would say that whole Nomi seed is for. It's also for the black dragon races that decided to try out the host opportunity. Yeah. But coming back to the topic, um once they fell. The point is that this never happened before, at least not in this Cosmoverse. So there was really no research on how they would act, what they would do, and they got very invasive. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's where we could again talk in a moment about the twins. Yeah. But anyways, because that's all interconnected, we are also going to talk finally about the twins. I know that some of you are curious about that subject. But anyways, they created the first ever Gonfall system, which is like, let's say, a universe that is 100% fallen. It has no connection to the source. So it's not just Phantom. It's basically like the most reverse system you could ever imagine. And what started to happen is that this system began to dr drain huge amounts of quantum. And that's where we already started to have the reversals of the plasma currents and that eventually led to the creation of a substance that is known as the black goo yeah and that one got out of their control they 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 partially lost control over that, that substance so that's why some of the black dragons decided for the host very few of them but some of them did because they just lost control over that substance which later became like a disease on this planet and in other systems yeah. So the other the other thing that's been coming up for me is that the the gone fall have fallen twice, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason that they have fallen twice is because they have fallen into darkness and they have fallen into light. Right. So when when we're talking about the black dragons, we also have to take the white dragons into consideration or the false white light. Right, so the reversals of the false white light is the second fall, in my opinion. It's like you have the, I don't know about you, but I've been seeing the yin-yang symbol. Like when, mm -hmm. when we're talking about people that have gone, um, have gone fall, <laughs> completely gone, or they have um, a very slight encryption of the eternal self. Yes. Um, I'm seeing that there is the yin yang symbol of the black and white dragons into play in the Precisely. internal creation domain. So they're they're pl inside their plasma bodies. Exactly, because it's not like this plasma template is fully black, right? It's basically able to run the light currents as well. The light bodies can obviously circulate energy. And that's where I would say this false light is coming into the game. So right now it's not about seeing the light but actually feeling it yeah so i would say it started with the fall into the darkness and then basically they dragged other races through this other type of fall because there's one thing that needs to be marked about the black dragons that they are not just some stupid draconian entities that want to conquer the world they are very very intelligent so they knew that uh, certain Christic races, even Christic races that would be very naive, mm -hmm. um, they would follow that light. Yeah. And later on, that light started twisting their consciousness. 
So yeah. there's many, I'll say, light leaders and other people on this planet who have very bright light body structures, but they just feel extremely, extremely awful to me, to be honest. Yeah. Well, because it's inorganic light. Yes, that, it's a light the... that literally hurts your eyes. We were yeah. once talking about it, those different types of the living and the dead light, even though I would say you can even see that among the plasma frequencies. Yes, that that is something that's been coming up a lot recently with um, the plasma bodies and how um, like organic light is a softness to it. Yes there is a soft glow right? whereas the false light bodies even the plasma bodies i'm talking about the color frequencies have a hardness to them right so if you if you're talking about the green there's a brightness to it which is an unnatural it's un, it's an unnatural green color and the violet the same you know you know, I remember that like right in the beginning when I started to look into the plasma frequencies, um, whenever I would see the plasmas, like different versions of it, it would be always in the pastel colors. Yeah. So that pastel frequency, which some, which at some point of its transfiguration gets basically translucent and turns into the eternal spectra of the plasma vapors, that's the right one. So if you're seeing those pastel plasmas, I would say they are the purest. But once you start to see those very strong, almost like, you know, radiating into your eyes, neon plasmas, mm -hmm. that can be a bit concerning. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It is that thing of like, actually hurts your eyes, right? Yes. <laughs> Did you want to get on to um, the twins already? <laughs> Yeah, because you see, like, if we are supposed to look into the Elysian fall, that's kind of related because we wonder, okay, so we had that experiment and it was actually in a buffer zone. But certain guardians, and they are the Nomia guardians that descended from the eternal into the internal creation planes, they came into that system and some of them fell on the way. And that's related to the concept of twins because then it's like it's basically the masculine as aspects that descended to save that um, gunfall system. And that's basically in order to get in, they had to open the gates to that system. And obviously, then they started coming out of the buffer zone and spreading to other parts of the universe. But basically, on their way in the gunfall system, they got stuck. So that's why many of the masculine individuals here, which are like direct incarnates of those eternal guardians, they still carry a fragmentation from that period, um, which is like 980 billion years ago. And then the women descended from those highland heaven domains of the eternal creation to rescue the men. And now some of them fell, some of them didn't. But basically they kind of like one aspect of the twin set, the masculine one, masculine one basically came down and then the other one followed. And then most of them also came later to rescue the external creation. And that's how we are here. Does that make sense? Yep. I hope it does. So I want to go kind of into the... So from, from what I was seeing was the part of the um rescuing mm -hmm. right was that it wasn't just from my perspective it wasn't just rescuing for the um like the it was all of the twin sets as you you were making contact with all of the twins in order to rescue the aspects of them carry their encryption home so that if they did fall there was a memory of them to be re-established on the other side, right? Absolutely. But we then have this idea of the femme fatally. Right? Right. 
that the the women were the ones that were stealing the codes right from the masculine is that right when actually it's the other way around i wouldn't say that would be the case unless like um let's say you've got some black dragon that is pretending to be a false twin and that's when such case may happen but that may also happen with the men you know there's been i mean i don't know what about you but like i've been working with many women that got terribly um affected through the fatally factor that was inserted by the men they were interacting with because the men have like this dominant electric encryption so they inserted this coding to them and that later started altering the purity of their consciousness yeah so i would say it's both not just the women so i have to i have to yes i would say it's just it is both playing off each other and i would say that the if you want to label them the white dragons go after the men and the black dragons go after the women yes. and the black dragons are also the ones that have hunted the women through time right yes and if you talk about personal you know my personal <laughs> situation in that you had to rescue me <laughs> Absolutely. And I think there's just one thing to be aware of, but like um, the fact that if a man falls, a woman can still get out. But if a woman falls, or let's say sometimes the genders may be twisted. So like, let's say Magnetic a man and electric. on the er as an earth incarnation, but like a woman as an essence, but let's just stick to this um, traditional aspect. So the feminine aspect can basically ascend without the masculine one because it holds the encryption for both, but a masculine aspect cannot ascend without the feminine one unless it connects to some kind of a host field or kind of tries to rescue himself this way, but it's much more complex. So that's yeah. why they are targeting the women more, because they can get both out, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I have been targeted immensely even though people think I'm a femme fatally. How ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, but there you go. Um, okay, so let's go into the eternal, right? So the reason that the eternal twins have come in is because of this issue, right? Yes, so like just kind of going back to the concept of the twins that you mentioned with those film fatally and stuff. This is all in context of the plasma Tantriasia twins. These are the level the twins on the level of the internal creation. So that means that they share a co-resonant coding of their plasma templates. So that means that they could theoretically or practically <laughs> uh, spread the plasma body distortions between each other, which also includes the dark flowering. So this type of a twin connection can be very difficult, very complex, and very toxic because they could reverse each other if they are not careful, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Um, they have to be aware of the fact that like, okay, we share a coresonant plasma body, and now that becomes an issue because we could poison each other. And usually they have a lot of dramas coming out on the 3D level because of that affliction. So like in case of the Tantriasia twins, they need to be focused on purifying their plasma templates. Otherwise they will have other things coming up on different levels, including the 3D. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I... Okay, so the when you're talking about eternal, so they could be, eternal twins that are also plasma twins and also going down the stack um but the eternal twins i'm calling them the new twins on the blog okay because how many times do you think that they've actually incarnated the point is that there was a moment when they forgot because of the timeline wars and many of them got stuck in the wall of time. So 
I've been working with that twin couple that started to have like um, wrong assumptions about themselves because of the illusions they were being fed with in the wall of time, which is basically this almost like an artificial void space that was created as a result of the plasma wars. And there's still many souls that are stuck there. And basically they are being fed with illusions there. So that's been like an aspect of what's been going on with, um, in this case, and I would say it happens to many twins, the plasma and the eternal twins. But when it comes to the eternal twins, they basically share the coresonant encryption of their eternal body. So once they come together, they can activate themselves much quicker and they don't have to be afraid about reversing each other so i'm not saying that the tantrisha twins are bad but there's just like a level up and the plasma twins can be the same as the eternal twins however they activate each other they activate the quantum of their eternal self so yeah. that makes them very gifted very powerful and very targeted yeah yes <laughs> so we know um okay so what the other thing that's kind of come up recently about like the eternal encryption is that I realized like for, for possibly for you and I and a lot of people that have that that inner knowing like that eternal knowing you just know mm -hmm. who who you are or you're working it out um but there are so many distortions in the way of the eternal self coming out into manifestation through the plasma bodies that you can't really access. Does that make sense? It's like there's some people that can't actually access who they are at the essence of themselves because there's so many distortions in the way. I kind of compare it to like, you know, just like the simple conversation about like how everybody's perceiving things in a different way for the filters they have in their own bodies. So yeah. we also have those filters on the plasma layer and the light body layer. And also before, like even the nervous system, right? Because you need your nervous system. You need to have a very, very much developed and aligned nervous network, like your physical nervous network needs to be aligned with your eternal body. I don't know if you also found out about that, but like I see this connection. So they don't, even those two need to be aligned with each other so that this eternal self expression could come out automatically or more like, you know, in, very, in a very smooth and loving way. So from my perspective, this plasma body interface needs to take place so that the eternal could downstep to internal and external. But at the same time, it's a lot of work to remove all the overlays that are on those, especially the internal levels, because that's yeah. how you can get those twisted plasmas running. You can overcome the light body much more easily than the plasma body. Yeah, that's what I've been finding as well. That's what I've been finding as well. I need it's like um you can do the work on the plasma body to a certain extent yes and depending on the plasma body of the planet and also the plasma bodies of those people around you you can also get like the flip again yes so it's a constant work whereas if you're coming from the eternal and i have to say i'm so grateful for your plasmantics course and um you mean the plasma regenesis yes yes plasma regenesis course because um that did enable me to go back into like re-establish the eternal self connection in order to not get my plasmas reversing so anything that comes up i know i can handle it basically um yeah so I do thank you greatly for that, for switching yeah, me back on. again in September, so. Good. Um, yeah, I will be posting the announcement soon. I know there's been a couple of people asking me when I do start again. It's gonna, going to be in the middle of September on a new grid in new energies. So that's exciting. Um, but basically, um, 
from my perspectives, because we were starting that course kind of first learning about the plasmas that cannot be reversed and then the eternal body, we'll do it different way this time. We start with the eternal body, especially people who haven't attended the classes before, because you need to have a certain core. You need to build up that bridge. And the issue is, is that if we start with the internal plasma body, we get used to a certain level of guidance. And then once it starts to kind of run on on reversal, we may not be aware of it. Yeah. And that's also where the context of the fallen alhumbras comes as well, where if you are working with certain councils, maybe I should even make a separate video about that. I don't know. I'm going to be very controversial on this video. So like if somebody cannot stand me talking anymore, you can just turn it off. <laughs> But um, I think you need yeah. to actually go into that, actually. I think you need to mm -hmm. out it. But like now? Yeah, go for it. Go on. Go on to so, it. I mean, there are I fallen councils, okay. right? Okay, okay. So I see it this way, that if we have those reversed plasmas on the internal level, that means that uh, some of those plasma suns partially got reversed on their corona. So like their core may be non-reversed but then the, once those plasmas start to kind of come on the outside there are different technologies or ways of reversing them or they just filter it through their templates and it comes out as reversed you can easily do it through the fatally factor and in order for that to be possible there must be logically some councils that are responsible for doing that and that kind of dates back to the fact that once the black dragons started taking over the internal creation, the Alhumbras kind of lost control because they were mostly focused on the light. I would say that this light that you're talking about, it's very much related to the Alhumbras because they might seem like the most light council in the entire universe, but they don't know what the darkness is. And that was their issue that what the source was trying to prove is that the alhumbras were like very much in the light but they didn't know how to overcome the darkness and the black dragons knew the darkness way too well but they didn't know how to integrate with the light yeah. well it's about integrating the two polarities so once those two came together some of the alhumbras started falling as a result of the interbreeding with the black dragons so they started reversing those organic plasma currents so now you don't know what kind of reversals you're holding in your plasma template. And if you're working with some councils to help you with that, just be very careful because they may not always have the best intentions towards you. So I will say, yes, I used to work with the Alhumbra councils, but I don't do that anymore because I know that there are some that would work with me in my highest interest. But at the same time, I do believe that myself as an eternal essence, I am as powerful as they are. And this is something we should realize that those councils may be smart, but you can be smarter. Yep. And it's not a matter of ego. It's a matter of realizing that since we all, or most of us, have our eternal connection, we can do beautiful things. And each one of us can do it in our own way. So that's my perspective. Yeah. And it's the same same thing I've been saying for years. You know, you know everything there is to know about you. Your eternal self knows you. Right? Okay. All the rest is distortion. All the rest is like the not self that you've picked up along the way, whether it's from your plasma bodies, your internal judgments of yourself or your internal judgments of other people. Absolutely. Right. And you may even have aspects of your plasma body missing. I guess we talked about it, right? That like I've been seeing that among the timeline war event, different parts of the plasma body being fragmented as a result of the interplay with the elementals on a plasma level. Yeah. And if you have this aspect stuck, this aspect keeps constantly projecting to your plasma template. And then you have to clear yourself from the dark flowering like every day 
because it just keeps coming back. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the hope with the Eternal Twins? What is um, the hope for love on this planet with the Eternal Twins? So from my perspective, uh, just like the Pantry Asia Twins apparently can open a gate system. And now to which gate system are you going to connect to? Maybe I will get to that in a moment. Um, they can open the, they can directly interface with the eternal Stargate system, which is basically composed of the eight bright flower gardens locations on the planet that anchor the flames of reclamation, the ones that connect you directly to the source frequencies. So that's even beyond the eternal. I would say that the eternal twins have, once they blend their fields, they have the power to directly tap into the source frequencies. Yep. whatever you would like to call it. But basically, they, as long as they are together, they cannot fall. Because their fields will just not allow for it. Because yep. it's like, no matter how reverse their plasma templates seem to be or the light bodies, there is this eternal connection that gets stronger when they are together. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, and also the it's the it. original mm -hmm. it's the original and the original encryption and the original twin set right yes all the twin sets later kind of down stepped out of it yeah so let's get to then where are where are they where are the um where is the original source network that they are plugging into? Okay, so I'm gonna share the screen and show that graph that I showed you before we talked on the recording. Yep. Um, okay, so this is like the cathedral complex, right? The one that we reside in. Basically, this, um, as I was explaining this to my students multiple times, this is also corresponding to the elements. So like you've got the ether essence that gives birth to all the other elements. So you've got the air, water, earth, and fire. But at the same time, it's like a, an aspect of the cosmoversal network. It's basically a part of our cosmoverse. So we reside within one of those um, cathedrals. And apparently we reside in the fire cathedral. That's why there's so much drama and war in this domain. And now those, <laughs> yes. But at the same time, uh, the water cosmaya, they are also referred to as the cosmaya or the cathedrals, whatever you prefer to call it, or like kind of like smaller cosmoverses. So there is also life in the water cathedral, air and, fi and fire, where we are, and earth and ether cathedral. The ether cathedral is central and it cannot fall. So it's kind of like the, in, right in the core of the ether cathedral, you've got a connection to the eternal, because this is still the internal system, the internal creation. But this core center point opens up and it starts to send out the eternal frequencies to all the other cosmayas. So the host, the eternal host is taking place or more like the transcendental host because it's only 200 years long. The planet has made this decision. Uh, this complex is basically uh, starting to receive the eternal frequencies for all of those four to come into the center and kind of come out on the other side of the eternal creation. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So, so they kind of turn themselves inside out, right? Yes. <laughs> Everything comes back to the zero point, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, so no, there is like a set of passages between those different systems. And some of you may, if you're familiar with the Kilontic science at all, you know that this is referred to as the Alhumbra Cathedral Network. So apparently one of them is in Florida. You've got this Atlantis complex, then you've got Bali in here, then you've got Norway in the water one, the air cathedral is Peru, and the fire cathedral is Egypt. 
theoretically i will i don't know if okay okay <laughs> anyway um i think you need to bring it out properly but yeah go on yeah, go, yeah, yeah, carry yeah. on Theo theoretically that's where you have all those um locations of the alhumbra complex and remember i was speaking about the alhumbra some moment ago <laughs> Um, so what starts to happen, why they put out this diagram in those darker colors is because there's been like a, an overlay set on this cathedral so that you can tap into the internal, but you cannot tap into the core of the internal. So this overlay here um, that was inserted basically reversed the gates. So it didn't reverse the organic gates, but it basically twisted some of the locations. So the gates that were able to fall, they managed to make them fall. But the ones that didn't, they just kind of added new locations. And this was done by the Black Dragon Collectives in order to keep this planet um, at a state of basically not being able to tap into its organic plasma body. Uh, or, it's in, or it's eternal self, I would say. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because that was like putting that one of those overlays that don't allow you to tap into the eternal self, as you mentioned. Okay, so shall I go into those locations? Um, yes. <laughs> so yes some, okay, so some aspects of the Alhumbra Cathedral Network have been twisted. So maybe I will start with those lighter ones. <laughs> so uh, the Egypt complex is not just in Egypt. We've got some locations. Uh, it was mentioned. One of them is also in Israel, but there's also one in Iran and in Saudi Arabia. Actually, this uh, location of the Black Cube, it used to be like a very sacred area um, that is being cleared now. So I would say it might be one of the cathedrals from my perspective, of course. So the fire complex, um, the fire cathedral is not just composed of Egypt and Israel, but also Iran and Saudi Arabia. And I will be just going like from five all the way up to one or mark all, all the way down. So um, now we've got cathedral four, which is corresponding to the earth element. And apparently it's the Bali complex in Indonesia. From my perspective, it's not. I would say that it's corresponding to um, Russia. Russia and the countries nearby. So I would say, um, as we spoke, it would be also Mongolia. And I would say that the core is Moscow, the core of those of this Stargate system. Moscow, Mongolia, and I would say also, um, you were on a trip to Lithuania, I would say that this one definitely has its own cathedral. And somehow what's coming up now is also Kazakhstan. Yeah. That's also like a powerful area. Okay. Now the water cathedral, which is Norway. And it is Norway, but it's also Finland and Sweden. Sweden. So I would say that the core gates are um, somewhere on the north in Finland. That's what I've been seeing. I didn't exactly locate it yet, but I would say that it's somewhere in Finland. So this complex is like the entirety of Scandinavia, basically. And those ones are important because they create this connection. And I would say it's taking place through, through the Svalbard Island, where they connect to the North Pole. But I will get into that in a moment. Uh, I will leave the best one for the end. <laughs> okay. Um, and the second cathedral is the Air. Um, and this one is Peru, but it's also Brazil and Chile. Chile. And you mentioned you mentioned those rainbow mountains, right? Yes. This could be like that would be the central point for me is the rainbow mountains. Yeah. In Peru. Mm -hmm. So I would say that different areas of South America collectively hold this complex. It's not just Peru, especially this area called Cusco it feels like it's one of those fallen gates. That's the name I got as I was tapping into it. And finally, when we have that Cathedral One, which is apparently Florida, the Atlantis complex, I would not say that's the case. I would say that um, the Himalayan mountains and the North Pole are at the core. Like those mountains are incredibly high. If you think about it this way, why we don't have such high mountains anywhere else? 
they are very special in a way. Some of them also look like pyramids. So they are right at the core. So you've got some of the four Himalayan mountain peaks. And right in the center, you've got the North Pole, uh, which is also basically, if some of you are not aware, in the center of the North Pole, which is not so cold, you've got like a very advanced civilization. And right at the heart of that civilization, there is a central mountain. Some people will refer it as the, mount, as the mountain Meru. Call it whatever you want. But I, I somehow like this name. And it's right kind of the core of that cathedral. And so that cathedral directly also interfaces with the Svalbard Island, which is pretty much on the north. So that's my perspective. I would agree with that. So Mount Maru is also, if you go back into um, the original before the Buddhist teachings, um, and it's kind of filtered through into the Tibetan Buddhism, um, Mount Maru is the, the sacred holy mountain that all the other mountains surround, right? You have this plateau and all the others around around it. Um, ones that come to mind are Kailash. Um, I'm just trying to think of any others. Kachanjunga is another mountain in um, Sikkim, actually is further down. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we'll work them, work them out. Absolutely. The and actual... then we'll even create a new graph, right? So the geometry of the cathedrals is correct. It's about the locations. Yeah. And as you said, um, you, you mentioned before the recording that basically from your perspective, it's also a place for which like the souls coming out of the North Pole, of the South Pole and then coming back to the North, right? Yes. It's how it's our natural incarnation points, how we would get in and out of um you have to remember that we kind of come in through the core. Yeah. Right. So the points of of um in in how do, incarnation, that's the word I was looking for. So the points of incarnation and excarnation would be through the core. Yes. Right? So you would come in and out of those way station points is how I would put it. Beautiful. That's, I would say that's the right way to put it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the eternal twins can connect to those authentic cathedrals. And those, and basically this overlay starts to disappear um because of the fact that in may we had the activation of the eight areas of the flames of reclamation on the planet also referred to as the bright flower gardens one of them is in france the other one is also in the himalayan mountains the other one is in mongolia so there's like a lot of those areas on the east kind of in those areas that um even as we said in russian complex and we call it now the russia complex <laughs> the earth cathedral um, even Siberia, these are sacred lands that are not really discovered. I mean, we cannot even access the North Pole. So, yeah, I would. Yeah. Um, I I remember that when I started doing um, the remote viewing, I kind of saw like I was wondering, okay, like so, what about those people that reach this North Pole peak, right? And I kind of like had an image of them just walking around the South circle or the north circle so they are just walking around because they are basically being repelled if that makes sense they are just yeah. making a circle because that's already a pathway that has been um orchestrated before so that we believe that they can get to that place but that's not really happening i don't think it's happened for quite a long time yeah I I'll go say time, but it time doesn't exist, but whatever. Um I would say the same thing. Like there's the hot there's an, another thing of um circum circum what's the word? Like circumnavigation. So you keep going around in a circle um rather than being able to see what's in the center. Does that make sense? 
Yes, yes, but I would say that's because of the uh, technology that was inserted so that they kind of keep uh, manipulating the compass so that you cannot actually get to where you want to get. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because, you know, you I, I would rather not say that publicly, but let's say theoretically, there's just a, once you get to the certain point of the North Pole, you cannot go further because it's very much guarded, literally. What that means, yeah. everybody can figure it out. Figure it out for themselves, yes. Figure it out for themselves. Okay. So I want to go into the incarnational paths, the next incarnation paths, because we were speaking about this just before we started recording. Um, and how, like, in certain teachings there are there's a path laid out for you right right um and that you have to move through these different um way stations for your consciousness um how how true do you think that is as we talked i would say that um there's a different pathway for everyone because there's no one else like you. So I would say that there's many agendas on this planet that are kind of telling you like, oh, there's going to be a spaceship picking you up and suddenly you will find yourself there and there and there and this will be your path back to the source or through ascension. But if you come from, I don't know, the Pleiades or from Sagittarius, that means you have to come back to Sagittarius because that's your home planet. So, and then you can go up the staircase, but you need to come back to where you started. Because we always say that like we are coming back home. And for most of us, this planet is not home. So like I would say that if you started as an angelic human soul and you've never been anything else before, there's a certain pathway that you need to follow, right? Yeah. But if you had lifetimes in many different other systems, among different councils, among different races, um, you follow that step-down process. So let's say you started out in Andromeda, even though usually it's much higher, and then you went down to Sirius and then to the Pleiades and then let's say to Venus and then to planet Earth. So you need to go all the way back like Earth, the Venus, etc, etc. Et However, if you increase your frequency high enough, you can also kind of like, you know, jump a few steps up. So for example, you're going to skip Venus and the Pleiades and you just go straight to Sirius. But you still have to remember them. I this yes. is the thing that I've um been saying for ages about the way you come in is the way you go back. But you have to still remember yourself in those places so that you can jump. Mm -hmm. Um and if you you don't, there's no one way fits everyone. Right? Because we've all come in in a different trajectory. We may have had um you know, we may have come straight in from mm -hmm. the eternal creation domains, right? So we then yeah. go straight back by passing all of the jump gates. Exactly. Right? Um, but you still have to remember your path. You still have to remember the way back. Does that make sense? Like if you've gone... Yes. Yes, so you need to kind of like uh, what I meant, like if you accrete enough frequency, that means that you managed to accrete that aspect of yourself that was on that planet that you were at before you came to planet Earth. So that means that you fully embodied that aspect. That means that you remember it and you start yeah. to discover the next one. Yes. Because it's, it's like always like bringing them all back here. Yes. Right. So you can then embody all of your other aspects of self so that you can go home whole. Exactly. Because like, I would say like if we were to compare it to the clock, you are not on 
hour 12 or 3 or 9, you are in the center of the clock. So all the numbers are coming to you. All the numbers come back to the center. And you set the time where you go. Yeah. Which number? Yep. Ah, that was good. <laughs> Interesting stuff, right? Yeah. So what's the if you if you figured out that you are an eternal twin, what's your mish? What is your mission? Why 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 are eternal twins here? Why are we here? And what is the what is the um mission while we're here? Is there one? That's a good question. I didn't prepare an answer for that. So what I feel is that first of all, they are supposed to represent the eternal be almost like frequency pillars of the eternal. So that means that wherever they go, they just spread that encryption. They can do nothing, but they still <laughs> transmit through their eternal bodies. And at the same time, they are almost like... I don't want to sound like they are superficial. However, they all are almost responsible for the entire creation field. So they can give the touch of the source, which means like remind other life forms that have fallen about their eternal connection. They can assist other life forms with reclaiming that connection or creating a host field for them. For example, like, let's say there's like a certain animal group, like let's say tigers that have a pretty messed up coding and they're eternal selves decided for the fact that they also want to re-establish that connection. So that host field, that eternal field can be created for them. And through that field, they can reclaim their core imprint. Right? So that's kind of yep. what, what I feel they are doing. And I would say they are they are holding the memory. They are holding this organic memory of the planet and everything that has been forgotten. Because, you know, I would say that ever since the plasma wars, we lost an access of what was before, before the fall of this planet. So we received an access to many twisted memories about Tiamat and all those weird stuff. And then kind of like, I don't know if you listen to my podcast about Gaia and Maya and this yeah. those two being together. That's been also a major aspect that was missing. So I would say they are the holders of that memory. So that's, that's my perspective. What do you think? I agree. <laughs> I agree with that. I think that they, like, as an, in, as if you are an eternal, <laughs> that's yeah. the way I want to label you, right? If you are an eternal, you will resonate those frequencies anyway, even if you have distortions in your plasma body that you've picked up, because we've had to take it on in order to get in here, right? Um, so the essence of you, the core of who you are, cannot be changed. It cannot be altered. It cannot be manipulated. You will always come back to the core essence of your being. Absolutely. Right. And the role from, from from my perspective is is that is one that you will have access to the source frequencies to emanate those from the core of your being out. What you may find, I, I don't know about you, Livia, but I have found is that what you will do, and I'm just learning myself what the function is <laughs> is that you will highlight every other distortion in every other life form that it has because you're going do you remember who you are yet do you yes. like you're emanating the frequencies of do you remember who you are um in order for any others that can find that within themselves 
to pick up on that. Yes, like, that's how this mirroring works. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I would say it's worth mentioning that this has never been really accessible on the planet before because of how, I mean, there were many chances for that to happen, but we've always been stopped. So it's finally the first time, I would say, in the history of this planet where we finally have an access to the eternal frequencies. Yeah, I, w I would say that too. And it is because of the, I, I think it's also because of the distortions in the way. So people will not be able to see beyond Yes. Right. Or not be able to access beyond the plasma body distortions to what the core essence is. Precisely. And there was an attempt even during the Christ period to bring in the eternal. But most of the people that were working with the Christic teachings back then, it just, I would say it blew their mind. They weren't ready for it. Maybe it's also because of the times, the characteristics of the times and kind of not that, not of, not all of them were even able to read. So it's kind of like that lack of um, preparation for it in a way, even though I think it's been mostly the distortions in the plasma templates, because there's something we should realize that Joshua 12, brought in the potential for the D12 frequencies. But there's been one more soul essence, and I will not mention this individual's name, but there was one more essence that brought in the potential for the eternal frequencies to anchor. So it was like the first birth of the eternal soul that triggered the birth of all others from their own. Because yeah. they kind of had that essence almost like face locked in the body because of that overlay on the plasma template. But, but once it has been taken off, it's kind of like this soul triggered the birth of all the other eternal. The other eternals. And here we are. And here we are. <laughs> Trying to get everybody out of here when they're ready. Um, and the other thing is the timing thing as well. Like, um, I know you say 200 years and I can get that that is a potential timeline. Yes. But we also have to do the work. Right. And it depends on who's stepping up and how many are stepping up and how many are actually claiming their eternal self, how far or how quickly that out pictures, right? Speaking of time, um, I would say that there's been a few days over the past month where I didn't sense the earth spinning. I don't know if you also had that sensation. Um, so I'd say that time is a funny thing. For some of us, it may be quick. For some of us, it may be very slow. Or it may fluctuate. It, depending on which kind of wave you're bringing into the body and what kind of timeline you align yourself with, with which kind of timeline your encryption is resonating with. And eventually so there's no, yeah, yeah. So don't, I would say don't set a time limit on yourself thinking like you have to kind of, you know, it's supposed to be an organic unfoldment. Yes. But as well, that's the other thing is like this pushing for, I found that in the past, when you look at light worker agenda programs, right? So the ones that have fallen light mechanics, will want to push you beyond your capacity. Right? There'll be a, a rush yes. to, you have to do this by a certain time or a certain date or pick up this frequency by then. Um, enable yourself to come into your own knowing organically. Absolutely. Because if you take too much on yourself, you may end up overloading your template and getting scrambled with too many frequencies. So each one in their own time. And there's no need to have that stress like, oh, what if I don't make it on time? 
and stuff like that because I would say that each one of us has our divine clock and that clock knows so it's finding your rhythm you know yes. that's how I, would say, how, how I would put it is finding your rhythm that you've always had but we've we've kind of been programmed out of you know what the rhythm actually is of sleeping eating waking you know everything Everything. yes but has it also been changing for you lately yes <laughs> have you have you yes. has it been changing for you yes um kind of going to sleep much later needing less sleep lately but maybe it's also because i changed the grid which is quite interesting um yeah with eating as well kind of like not feeling the need to eat so much and more like smaller portions so that's kind of very interesting how how it's been changing so i've noticed this week in particular like i've been sleeping less same thing and then wide awake yes. wide awake two three o'clock in the morning going okay what am i doing now <laughs> also that's the time i go to sleep and i wake up around eight o'clock and i'm ready <laughs> okay <laughs> so we're doing we're taking in shifts then uh, yeah it seems like it <laughs> awesome so, is there anything else you feel like you want to say um since we are in the times of the in in the cycle of heat alone right now um how, how did you feel those energies starting from the eight i'm curious also to hear your perspective. Uh, so i have yeah the the eighth um I think that there were so many people talking about Lionsgate, you know, mm. and the eight eight false calendar mechanics, um, and harvesting and stuff like that. Um, for me, I felt the same. Like I, I've been awake a lot, very active. Um, other than that, there's also been waves of devastation as well for me over certain situations i've been feeling a lot more emotional me too that's for sure um from my perspective like this was like i could feel the eternal frequencies but that was more like on the ninth not on the lion's gate i don't even like to call it this way it's like too many people make too many associations and there's been a lot of uh technology attacks coming through different devices. So this is just something that I noticed that this intensity of those electromagnetic frequencies was really, really intense. And basically like kind of looking back into this map of the Cosmaya that I was showing, those cathedrals, they were attempting to open more of those artificial gate sets. And this is something that needed to be managed because they were doing that mostly through CERN and um, different and many other particle accelerators so i was feeling that more from the the calendar thing as mm -hmm. well like the lion's gate 88 false mechanics right. of how everybody's feeding into that feeding into you know being harvested basically losing some of their quantum through that portal false and I would say that the energy drained through that portal was actually used for those devices to have even more energy. So yeah. if any of you has been celebrating that in any way, I would recommend to get Look it back. What you're coming. Oh, that's one thing that came up, actually. So um, one of the devices, thinking about it now, that was coming up a lot with people with headaches yeah. was... Um, on the right hand back of the skull right there's a disruption mm -hmm. frequency disruption device so if anyone finds one of those look, look i've been basically getting people with very similar symptoms like um heart arrhythmia or more like slight heart pain um kind of this state of like those heat waves going through the body but not a pleasant type of heat waves, just like you sometimes receive while frequency accretion, but like this burning sensations, headaches kind of, and like pain in the eyes. 
And that's been usually either a device at the back of the head or a connection to a device. Okay. So just watch out, watch out for those as yes. well. Basically, I would say that the source frequencies are the most effective for it. Even like what I've been just doing lately, because it's coming a lot during the night, at least in the area where I live, just kind of setting a bubble from the source frequencies around my head. And I don't feel that disruption. Otherwise, it can be really, really intense. So it's a really good thing to do, actually. So if you're coming from your, I've been doing this a lot with students, of, of them coming from their eternal self and pushing out past their skin. So they have a protection field from their mm -hmm. eternal self. As exactly. Well. This type of thing. That's how I've been doing that. Kind of like from the core of my pineal and yeah. like this. Like a protection helmet. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Crush helmet. <laughs> Eternal crush helmet. Put one on before going anywhere. Wow. So it's been a very intense and interesting recording, I would say. Yes. Yeah, it has. Thank you, love. Thank you for coming on and speaking with me, catching up and giving out insights and stuff on what's going on now. Thank you so much as well. It's been absolutely lovely. And I guess we're going to do it more often now. Yes. Um, yes. So yeah. I'm back. You yeah. are back. And we are back in the game, right? Yes, we are back in the game together as well. Absolutely. So All right. I wish you a wonderful rest of August. I guess we'll connect by then as well and maybe put out another recording. Yeah. And I hope that this has been interesting and I hope this made sense to all of you. Thank you so yep. much for listening. All right. Take care, everybody. Take care. Lots of love. Bye. 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 Bye.